Hi everyone and welcome back to HCGI. My name is Eugene Shmirov and in this fairly quick tutorial we're going to grab a uh, low poly mesh, that, uh, one of the low poly meshes that we've created in the previous one and uh, project uh, all the high level details onto a normal map with using uh, the decimated version that we've got from ZBrush. So let's uh, jump into Maya. All right, I'm going to start with softening the edges. Uh, it's a good idea to do so. Uh, to select soften edge in the mesh display menu because uh, when you bake your uh, normal map, sometimes those hard edges can transfer onto the map. Now let's generate some UVs. I'm going to select uh, planar uh, projection here. Let's uh, choose the axis, the axis. Yeah, the axis here. That's going to be fine. Now if we open our UV editor um, window, you see that uh, here is our mesh all uh, squashed down into um, flat surface. Now let's start uh, placing some steams here. Now I, I want to start with these blades here because it's a sharp edge and a nice place to hide a UV seam. Um, I'm just uh, you know cutting uh, sh uh, shift right click cut and with this button here enabled you, you can see the seams on your 3D model. So I'm just going to kind of think about how I'm going to place those seams. Now uh, you the main idea here is that you have to try and hide your seams from the player um, and there are several ways to do that like for example uh, you, can, you may choose places that are not as apparent like they're not visible to camera or you can choose uh, you know uh, sharp edges or mat material transitions like eventually I'll end up uh, cutting all the different material transitions uh, where like wooden part it becomes a metal part. Uh, I end up cutting them into different UV islands here. Um, and um, you know, you gotta think about uh, sometimes you cannot uh, place, you cannot avoid hiding the seam, like for example, on those uh, rounder parts um, in the middle section, uh, you cannot hide that seam. Like there is no place you can, you can place it and not make it vis invisible. So you have to just kind of think about which part is going to face the camera and which part is going to look uh, the other way and um, try and place your seam on the part that's not going to be visible to camera or at least is not going to be facing camera as often as the other part if that makes any sense. So I decided to put a seam here because I kind of presume our game uh, is a third person game or well imaginative game, ima Im imaginable game um, is a 3D uh, third person game, you know, so probably player is not going to look at this axe from the bottom. So I'm just, uh, I just, I'm kind, of, I'm kind of trying to figure out which parts I want to be separate UV islands and which parts I want to be a single UV island. And I kind of realized that it would be a good idea to sort of like have the blade part and the iron part in the middle uh, be a single UV island and uh, this lantern to sort of uh, be a separate, first separate material and then just separate UV island as well. So let me see here we, like I have this cut, these cuts on the top that I might need to sew. All right, so let's, let's first, let's sew these guys together. Select those, One, two, three, four. So all the way through the other side as well. Okay, and then select two UVs, shift right click in UV editor, two UVs. So now this is the, this is uh, the uniform UV island here. Let's cut, uh, make, place some cuts here to separate the lantern part from the blade part. And um, we're ready to start uh, managing some of our UV islands here. All right, let's manage our UV shells a bit. I'm pressing move UV, move UV shell button here, and then this uh, bluish purple button to see the flip, flipped UVs. So whatever is red is flipped. And then I'm using um, smooth UV tool to try and kind of unwrap them, but it doesn't unwrap for some reason. Well, I need to cut it through, separate it into two different shells now, and then I'll sew them back together. So here I'm just placing the seam. I can use this instrument here that just connects two uh, vertices um, and uh, finds the path, edge path between two vertices. So you can use that instrument as well. I'll just manually click through. 
Now I'm cutting through here. Now uh, move UV shell again. Now we can see one is blue and one is red. And the red one is it's um, it's flipped. So I need to flip it first, then rotate, and then go to Smooth UV tool, select it, and drag unfold. All right. And now let's unfold this one. All right. Now let's bring them together and um, select these edges here, these bordering edges. So select all of them. Okay. And then sew UVs. All right. So now let's select the entire island and smooth UV again. All right. Now it unfolds nice and clear. Okay. Let's scale it down, put it here for now. We'll manage the sizes later. For now, let's focus on um, different UV islands here. So here's our lantern. Now it's one uh, big chunk, so I want to cut it through into two pieces. So here and here, and you're kind of placing seam on both sides. Uh, you know, this is just like inside, so players probably not going to notice these seams. Now this one is red again, but we'll, uh, uh, we'll fix it later. As you can see, it's red because we have this button enabled, so it kind of shows us all the inverses, all the inverse UVs. Uh, and um, when you're using um, your um, smooth UV tool, don't try to uh, to unwrap the red ones because they will just like fold onto themselves, onto themselves, and so on and so forth. So here I'm separating the different uh, parts. Uh, as you can, like I'm separating the wooden parts from the metal parts because it will be easier to manage them at the uh, texturing stage. But these things are round, so I'll probably need to cut a, um, a seam across them. It will be harder to hide this seam because it, it's kind of, there is no way of avoiding, you know, placing it in plain sight. So you have to kind of think about what side of the axe is going to face towards the camera and what it's going to look into, you know, look other direction and place your seam there. So I'm, I'm going to assume this, this side is, is looking the other direction. So I'm just like cutting through here. And uh, you can uh, actually use the path, uh, edge path tool as well, this one. But it doesn't cut um, across multiple um, UV islands. So I mean, if you, if, you, if you have one large UV island, you can use that. Or if you have just a large UV island, but you can just double click it and, you know, just select through and then deselect whatever you don't need. And let's deselect these guys here. We don't need seam here on this side. All right. No, we don't need seams here. So let's just select this, this one side here. Okay. Now let's cut it. So here's our seam. Uh, okay. So let's unwrap these guys. Let's go to tools, smooth UV tool, unfold. Now it unfolds nice and easy. And here I just sped up this part because I mean it's just like I'm doing the same thing. I'm just like grabbing those different UV islands and unfolding them. Sometimes they will not unfold, and uh, you have to relax them a bit. Now there's uh, in Polygon's menu there is unwrap tool, but I mean it works the same way, and I kind of find smooth UV tool um, a lot more convenient. But you know you can use either one. All right, so let's try and wrap this guy. Here, it's just something's not right. Okay, let's relax it a couple of times. You know, it, it's sometimes it takes a couple of relaxes and then unfolds to sort of like get it to a shape that um, you know that you can use. All right, so now let's kind of let's see. This one is going to be bigger. Let's manage the texture uh, space here. And I'm going to use layout here, a menu. So Maya can lay out those guys for me. All right. Um, so let's see. Prescale none. Uh, no flips. Everything's okay. Um, into region. We can we can select different things here. I'll select into region. Um, scale mode uniform. And rotate ninety degrees. Uh, oops, I forgot to select those. Hit apply. And um, okay, this is not a good way to. You know, to this is wasting some UV space. So let's see. Instead of bounding box, let's select shape, and here you can see kind of uses the UV space um, a lot more effectively. Now we need to make sure these guys don't touch and don't overlap because you know 
that might happen with automatic things and auto automatic layout. So I'm just like moving them a little bit apart, you know. And the other uh, good idea is to keep them away from boundaries of your UV space, just in case. I mean, Maya tends to make them touch uh, UV boundaries, but it's not always a good idea because it can cause some errors and overlaps and see visible seams like, you know, so just make it close, but not too close. All right, so everything's looking good. We can close this menu now and close our UV editor and um, uh, let's go into baking now. Okay, so I'm gonna start with uh, going in, into layer editor and I'll create new layer uh, and just rename this one LP for low poly. This is where our low poly axis is going to be. Just for I'm creating these layers for the uh, e more easier um, to make uh, them disappear and appear, reappear more easily. So here I'm adding our decimated um, high poly one, and I'm just going to add it to another layer here. Okay, let's select this. Um, combine because you know ZBrush broke it down into different you know sub tools, so I'm just recombining them. And then everything's fine. Let's delete history real quick here, just in case. All right, so now I can um, create a new layer and call this one HP for high poly. Hit save, and I'm going to add this. Let's see, I'm going to add select object here. Okay, now uh, it's easier to manage visibility. So let's select our low poly mesh, go into rendering menu, not modeling, where we were, and select transfer maps in rendering uh, submenu. All right, so here is where we can uh, project our maps. So the way it works, you select the target mesh, and uh, then you select the source mesh. Uh, you can uh, display envelope, but for some reason it doesn't work here in my version of Maya. So I'll just have to try and wing it. Okay, so let's see, source mesh. Um, this is where we need to specify, uh, this is target mesh, our low poly mesh, and uh, in source mesh, we need to specify our high, high poly mesh. So I'm just reading add selected with, with high poly mesh select, obviously. And we have a bunch of uh, different um, settings here. So I, for some reason I have two normal maps. I don't need two, I just have one. So here you can specify your um, uh, where you want it to be saved. Uh, Axe UV. Okay, this is nice. I'm going to call it NM, normal map, PNG. Uh, you can select either object space or tangent space. I'm selecting tangent space, obviously, here. Uh, let's see. Uh, you can select this so Maya will connect this to the assigned shader right away as soon as it bakes. Now, Maya common output, you can, you know, specify a map with, uh, like, make it 2K map, 4K map, but it caps it 4K map, which is inconvenient. All right, so, uh, you know, usual stuff like uh, sampling quality. I'm going to just stick with medium here. You can uh, flip your U or V. Here in advanced options, you have this search method thing, and you see me uh, selecting inside the envelope and the outside envelope here. But I actually recommend using the first one because uh, it didn't work for me, so I had to rebake it. Um, and the resulting map that we have in this video is actually from the closest to the envelope, the first um, option here. So if you hit bake and then it starts, uh, it kind of takes its time to bake. And I've skipped this part, I've paused the video, so here it is baked. Maya has already hooked up our uh, UV map, uh, our, um, excuse me, our normal map to our model. And I just created some lighting to test it out. All right, so let's rotate it to see if everything works fine. It looks good, looks good. Um, reacts to light accordingly. So basically that's that's all there is to it. All right, so here's our little demonstration again. It's just our um, original mesh with the normal map applied and the topology is just overlaid on top, you know, for just demonstration purposes. So the next stop is actually texturing the model inside of Substance Painter. And uh, if you found this uh, video informative, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. And be sure to check the next part. And I see you there. Bye. Mm -hmm.